All right, so I think this is the last study I'm going to do. Um, I've done, uh, I think, uh, five or six studies. And um, anyway, uh, so this is the infamous JI case study that you might have heard of. Other Wyckoffians, uh, they talk about this, or have heard of it. <clears throat> and this is the JI case. It's a JI case reaction. Right? So let's go over it. Stock opens at 37 and a half. What is that? That's right here. That's the open. That's the open, the two, 200 shares. Declines 37, immediately recovers all but one eighth of the decline. Decline. Yeah. Then it dips to 37 and eight, which is this right here, the zero two. And, um, yeah. And the next sale is 37 and a half, 37 and a half, what am I doing, right here. So he takes the long. Again, <clears throat> this is the indication of strength. Why? First, the ability to recover. So it went from, um, went down and then it went up and it took out the high. All right, so the ability to recover, next the quarter point dip. So that little low volume, Talk about indications of strength here. Uh, one, ability to recover, small dip. Okay, there's more strength than weakness. And that's usually what he does off the open anyway. All right, so that's the high, and um, recovers, dips, and then breaks out. We go long at 37 and a half with a stop at 36 and 3 fourths. That's pretty low. So it's the low minus like two. So 37. And a half. This is long. I would put it. And his stop is thirty six and three fourths. Okay, so what I'm saying here is it goes up, it goes down, and then fully recovers, but there's also a break. He doesn't, I don't know why he doesn't mention the break, but he just mentions a full recovery, but it's more than that, it's a break. And I think that's very important. A trading zone, 37 and a half to thir three fourths is established. So 37 and a half to 37 and three fourths. No, no, no. It's 37 and a half and to three fourths. All right, so I, I mean, okay, there's a trading range. All right, great. And after the dip of one eighth, the price moves up to 37 and seven eighths. So the price moves up to right here where the 15 is. 1500 being taken there. Another one eighth dip and thirteen more are taken at thirty seven and seven eighths. So <coughs> that's this right next to the fifteen. Followed by a straight run up, a reaction of one eighth, a rally and another dip of a quarter, making the trading zone uh thirty eighth and three eighths to three to three fourths. Three eighths to three fourths. Thirty-eight. One, two, three. So then now the trading zone is here. Basically, trading zone is the same as trading range. 
and um, Is the other one? It's this. This is the zone. Okay. Note the dullness between eleven a.m. and twelve based lunchtime. Right. A bearish sign on a rally. As the trading strains out to the right of the chart, we find that a considerable volume is coming in on the bulge. I don't see it. What considerable volume? You're talking about the 15 and the three? Adding the transactions horizontally, we note 8,600 shares change hands at the 38 and 38 and 38 level. So it's one, two, three, 38 and three, eight level. 38, one, two, three. All right. I've always said about this. So, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I don't know where he got 8,600, but he says that 8,600 shares change ha hands at 38 and three, eight. One, two, three. I think it's even more. Like if you take a look at this entire this row up here. Oh, and above, my mistake. So yeah, it's uh, it's the total total range. How much how much volume traded in the whole range? That makes sense, All right? And above on the first run up, we have moved our stop up, and then to. 37 and 3 fourths. So he's just moving his stop here and here, right? And now we change it to a double stop for if this 8,600 shares is not followed by further purchases, we expect the price to decline. And if it breaks even one eighth below the 3838 support, we want to get out of the long and go short. Okay, so what's the point here? This is just a uh, Break, uh, breakout trading, but breakout with cause. I made that so apparently abundant that, okay, I'll try to explain another way. You know, when um, a lot of folks, when they're looking for a breakout, and pay close attention to this because you're probably doing this also. Um, when, when you're looking at a breakout, you're looking at the level. You're looking at three things. Typically, you're looking at the level it's breaking, the volume it's breaking on and the increase in price sped meaning the trading range or the atr or whatever the tr you know the high to low so the range or the spread or the volume and the level right like if it's going to break a hundred does it break on increasing price and volume but here you see that when he's looking at it he is looking at whether the breakout has a base again he's looking to see if the breakout is accompanied by a base all right he's looking at how many shares are traded within the range then the breakdown within the range then the breakout all right so he this is one of the things that if you look at breakouts in most systems, most uh, all of that, they don't look at the the what's ha they they don't look at what's happening before the breakout. What they're looking at is what's happening on the breakout and the level if it's breaking, how much volume came in, how much price spread, whether there's follow through or not. But his his idea, Wyckoff's idea, is a little bit different. It's look before the breakout to see if there's a range and if there's volume in that range with lines of support or resistance. And I know why. I mean, it's so obvious. He doesn't explain it here, but the idea is very common sense. He's looking for accumulation into markup. 
which is the range into the breakout, accumulation into markup is a range within into breakout, and then it's looking for distribution into markdown or uh, the range into a breakdown. This is what's so important. If you see his thinking here, he's looking at uh, how much traded above this level, how much traded along this line, if we summit this, is there a range, you know, all of that. So, because he knows that you need accumulation for breakouts to be successful and you need distribution for breakdowns to be successful. That's what's going on. All right. And now you're just changing to a double stop. I don't recommend this be done by newbie traders at all. Uh, you need a, a level of um, experience to basically just flip your position like that. For if the 8,600 shares is not followed by uh, upside progress, we expect the price to decline. Why? Why do we expect it to decline? Why? Because it's 8,600 shares there. Why do we expect it? Because 8,600 shares in distribution, which he didn't overtly say. He says 8,600 shares above, you know, in that range. But that's 8,600 distribution. And we expect decline, meaning we expect markdown. And if it uh, breaks even, we want to get out of our long stocks and go short. Okay, fine. All right, the price touches 38 and a quarter and gives us a profit of uh, half on our long put, long stock and puts us short on that figure. Our stop on the short trade is 39. So whenever he does that, he puts the stop at least two two boxes above, as I've said multiple times. Uh, you know why? Why? Because you have those lines of resistance. So if you have a breakdown, right, it's not easy to just snap back. They have to come back and absorb those lines of resistance, break through those lines of resistance, and create a new high. And that new high cannot be an up thrust. It has to go like one or one to two boxes above. So in all of that, it makes a lot of sense to put the stops above those congestion distribution areas and below the accumulation areas, because to get past those areas, you need a lot of pressure. All right. Where am I? In a few sales after that, the entire, the entire gain for the day is lost. I go all the way down here. The price touch 37, the low point of the opening dip. This is one and three quarter down from the top and calls for seven eighth rally, but the rally fall, fails or falls one eighth short, fails, I don't know, one eighth short of the way. Okay. The volume is light bearish, low volume rally, one, two, three, four. Uh, all right, the volume is light volume pulled back. Okay, our stop is first moved to 38 and a quarter. He's moving at 38 and a quarter, which is right here, because they have light volume rallies. You know, how you know is um, you have a lot of ones. I have a single print. So when you create the footprint chart on point and figure, and you're typically going to divide the ES volume by a thousand. All right, so I'll give you an example right here. This is two, only 2,000, right? I'll show you what's going on on the ES right now. All right, so here, these prints, 2, 14, 26, 13. Obviously, it's not 13. It's 13,000. I'm dividing it by 1,000, right? So, and also, this right here, you see this? You see that 50? Let me ask you, do you think that's uh, demand or supply up there? That 50 right there, which is the biggest, and look at 47 and 50 on the highs. So it's coming in, it's coming in, supply is coming in. I'm gonna catch that uh, turn, by the way. So that's what I'm trying to do, and it'll happen uh, soon enough. 
All right, anyway, where were we? So over here, when the rally begins to fade out, we make it okay. From that time on, there's a succession of new lows and we rallies. We move our stop and nothing is happening caused by any uneasiness of the short term. What are you doing? So note, rally from 37 follows. One fourth, one fourth, three eighth, one fourth. <laughs> okay. Now the stock is at 34th and a quarter. So he's just saying it, it just went goes down. All right, that's all he's saying. It goes down on weak rallies. One, four, two, four, three, four, one, eight, all that. So it's just weak rallies. Now the stock is 34th and a quarter, which is the low. And at that price, we are four points to the, of profit, I guess. All right. Um, we may be smart enough to cover on the decline around 2 p.m. or to shove our stops down within a quarter of the bottom because we can't expect it to go right on down without a rally. But the rally of three fourths and 35, 235 warns us that the stock is meeting more resistance. So, you know how? Why is it meeting more resistance? Take a look at this 04143 all of a sudden 10 at the high of the column, right? At the high of the column. Same thing here. 2, 14, 14, 26, 28, 47, and 50. Finally, someone's selling at these levels. At the top of a column. At the top here, 10, the 10 is a thousand, it's the biggest number at the top of the column. So it just means there's some resistance there. It may pull back and then go up on higher whatever. So what it really needs to do is just break, break, make the range, distribute, and break for the for the seller opportunity. Uh, 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 um. But the rally of 34 to 35 warns us that, the, that it's meeting resistance below there and when it dips again on three thirty fourth and a half we give an order to buy it at the market and cancel a stop we have to pay 35 which gives us a gross profit of whatever we stand pat for the rest of the day so here meets resistance that resistance causes a pullback that pullback is on low volume extremely low Four columns, sum of four columns is two. He says, you know what, I'm going to buy or just hold. For me, you know, if, if it goes up, it needs to go down, up, down, then you have to break. You got to break. You have to break, it breaks here, and then you can always buy on the pullback. And I, I don't think it's a good idea to just go long or cut. Okay, he's covering, but if you want to go long, you need the up and down and up and down and lines of the support and resistance, which is right here, by the way. Yeah, it's tested later on. And those. Okay, so I think this is the... Let me see. Um, so this was the JI case. Uh, the idea is really simple. Um, to really see this in a in an easier way, just remember the real schematic here is nothing more than accumulation to markup to distribution to markdown. All markets work in that way. Because when demand overtakes supply, you usually have accumulation and small campaigns are, or large campaigns are planned. So this is what happens. Then you have markup, then you have distribution, then you have markdown. How do you see that on a chart? You see that by this up and down and up and down and up and down, creating lines of support and resistance or lines of accumulation or distribution. And then a break. And then a break. Then you realize that that 8,400 shares over here was distribution, 
after the break, after the high volume prints, you realize, you know, that that's what it is. And then you can get in on a test or test. All right, so I've gone over this. Now, the other thing is, uh, it's really important to paper trade. Don't go into the market by, you know, thinking you can just uh, read. You have to go in there and practice. And um, if you want more info or you want to go over this, you can rewatch the studies and better yet, go through the the stuff, you know, the, the studies. And, um, and then you just need the platform and data with the, you know, you're going to trade the ES, just put a wave chart on it. So there's nothing more than zigzag. If you want labels, volume or time or price, doesn't matter, just whichever labels, because uh, they will clearly indicate strength and weakness uh, when you have higher highs and all of that. And then uh, you just get any type of footprint. If you don't have point figure footprint, get another footprint, range bar footprint, but point figure will be very clear. Uh, you can use the study with that. And um, and the platforms, there's so many platforms that have footprints. So, you, I mean, you can literally get any one of them. And, I mean, I don't think the free ones are... The free ones support it, but any any uh, paid platform should have footprint. I right, take care. Bye.